The title of today's message is Visitation or Habitation. Visitation or Habitation. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of just having visits from the glory of God. I want to reside in its habitation. You know, in the Old Testament, you know, his, he inhabited his temple after they built it. But the priests could only go in once a year. They used to have to tie a bell around them. And so if the bell stopped ringing, they knew they had something sin in their life and they were now dead. Because you couldn't go into the glory of God and have sin in your life. And then they would drag them out. They had a rope tied around their leg and they would drag them out. So they got to visit God once a year. And then there was other places. There was, let's call them portals for less than better words. How I many you know Jacob, whenever we talk about the, the, the angels were ascending and descending the place he was at, that he wrestled with the angel. Of course, some people say it was Jesus, whatever. Anyways, he ended up dislocating his body, he wrestled. He said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. How I many know that was still just a visitation? I mean, there was a season once a year that angels would come down and trouble the pool of Bethesda, and healing would happen. When the pool was troubled, they had to get into the water. It was a visitation. But I'm here to tell you, since Jesus came and the Holy Spirit descended upon the earth, we're now at a place where we can have a habitation. And God has been setting Broken Chains Church up. You can feel the electrifying of the anointing in this room right now for a place that he inhabits. Not only, but he wants to inhabit us first. But it's like any place. Whenever we all have it, we come together, we got a bigger battery, and it's electrifying. So there's a place upon the earth where God will move and do specific things. We have it all down through history, Azusa Street, uh, uh, the Wales Revival, over the Smoky Mountains. There was different places where God started to inhabit the places instead of just visit. But that also, just as the priests couldn't have anything in their life, God says, I need you to clean up your life. I mean, no backbiting, gossip, discord will destroy a body. Yes. And when it's going on, God can't inhabit it. He may visit, but he won't inhabit it. Right. Come on. And if you've been around here very long, I'm just going to let you know as pastor, I don't tolerate that stuff. Now, people are really smart. They'll usually do it anywhere but around me. But I hate to break it to you. The Spirit tells on you. And I will pray for you a long time before I say something, but if it starts affecting people, especially baby Christians that don't know no better, I will pull you aside and say, knock it off. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen? But why? Because we're looking for a habitation, not a visitation. And we've experienced some great visitations here, but listen, I believe God is preparing us for a habitation. Amen. I'm going to give you some scriptures on it. I ain't pulling it out of my hat. Come on. I mean, if you ain't got the word of God, it ain't worth hearing. But how may does a habitation sound good? When God's inhabiting a place, how many of you ain't got to wait to be here? When God's inhabiting a place, his glory is there changing. He's working. He's putting his super to your natural and things are shifting instantly. And for too long, we've been happy with a visitation. Because a visitation doesn't really require you to change. It just happens for you to be at the right spot. A habitation means you've got to change. <laughs> Some of you are getting it this morning. Yes. Psalms chapter 68, verse 5. Psalm 68, verse 5. By the way, I'm freezing also. If the rest of you are freezing, I just don't have time to click all the buttons to make a difference. So just suffer with me. <laughs> it was better than being hot. Amen. Psalm 68, verse 5. It's probably my red ball head. <laughs> a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. So now we've seen here, we're just establishing a baseline that God does have a habitation. 
And he, how many know he takes care of the fatherless? He takes care of the widows. Come on, I was one of the fatherless. He took care of me. He was a father to me. And he, uh, he'll, he'll put it. He'll come and reside down there, and he'll be a father to those that don't have a dad. Come on, how many know we need a heavenly father that he wants to come and inhabit? Mm -hmm. Psalms twenty-six, verse one. Psalms twenty-six, verse one. Psalms twenty-six, verse one. When you can read it, say amen. amen. A psalm of David, judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. How did he walk? I have trusted also in the Lord, I shall not slide. How many know that means he had an opportunity to do what? Slide. He had to trust God when it didn't make no sense. Come on. If you want a habitation, you're going to have to trust him sometimes when it don't make no sense. You line up with the word of God and you walk it out. It doesn't matter what everybody else says. You don't curse them. You bless them. But you line up with the word. You know, by his stripes, I was healed. Past tense. Already done. Finished at the cross. How many know you've already overcome? You overcome how? By the blood of the Lamb. How can I be an overcomer? Because God's already put the blood to it. He already finished the work. I just have to enforce it. How do I do that? My tongue controls my body. How many, listen, Satan's after me. When was the last time you rebuked him? When was the last time you shut the door that you'd opened to him? Come on. Are you with me this morning? How many, listen, some of you have never even experienced what I'm talking about. Some of you have had a taste of it. But man, I hope I can get you to a point that you want a habitation of God. His glory filling the room. Changing everything. Listen, David, <laughs> well, actually it was Joshua. Joshua used to love to go spend time in the temple. <laughs> they would be, he was in the holies. He was in the glory. They'd go looking for him, and he was in there. I think it served him well when he had to lead God's people. But listen, we don't have to wait. I mean, we have a we, we do have a prayer garden out there. I believe the glory is going to be there. It's going to be a place you can pray. We've got some fountains and things out there. We've got our first memorial stone. And so we'll be getting some more. If you want to get one for a member or something, let me know. And we'll get it done. But I mean, I want to take it with me. John G. Lake was famous for whenever, one time he was in a type, in, a, in pray and worship and deep. He was on a train. He was not in church. He was having a phenomenal time with God. He didn't care what people thought. And the Bible says his shadow fell on a bar. And he didn't even know what was happening. People in the bar testified later. They were screaming out. They, they got so convicted of their sin. They were crawling on their hands and knees and weeping and tearing. And they were finding their way to the train and asking, how can I be saved? Why? Because John G. Lake had had moments, had so, spent so much time with God that when he entered into that place, he brought the habitation of the Lord Most High and His glory trail upon the earth. And it affected everyone around him. So instead of him being, it's such a horrible place out there. I hate to go outside. Everybody's so mean and ugly. The glory of God was with him. The habitation of God was changing the area. You don't think God can still do that today. You need to read your Bible. In Acts, when they stepped out full of the Holy Ghost, people were getting saved. They said those aren't drunk as you suppose. The glory of God was showing them there was a habitation of God that visited that place. And we see it all throughout the earth. And God wants to do it today. But it's got to start in you and me. And it costs something. It costs you your flesh. It costs cost you being right. It costs you. It, 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 sometimes the enemy will try to make you think it costs you everything. But I'm here to tell you there's nothing that's, that, that's worth 
not being in a place that God wants you to be. And in these last days, he's looking for people that are more concerned about what he thinks than what everybody else thinks. And by the way, most of you, none of you would be here this morning if you hadn't already experienced some of the peace and the glory of God in your life. You may not have any idea the level I'm talking, but you've had a taste of something and you realize it's better than what I had before. I'm going to keep going that way. And we all grow at different rates in different places. Don't sit here and think, well, I can't attain the crazy he's talking about. I'm just happy just not to want to slap somebody today. <laughs> and we've all been there. The spirit of slap used to be strong on me. And God delivered me. Aren't you happy? Yes. <laughs> I've not made it very far. I have trusted the Lord and I shall not say, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Who in here is man and woman enough to say that to God this morning? Examine me, Lord, and prove me. But if it don't put a little fear in your hiccup and a little uh, cough in your throat, you probably ain't really doing it right. Come on. Because when he does, he will. But it, it's going to be good. Yeah. So this morning, I believe God is wanting us to say, Lord, examine me, prove me, try my reins and my heart. How many know God judges the intentions of our heart? You know, I've meant well and tried to do right and still made a mess before. I've even said dumb things that I never intended to. Even some people took them that way. They repeated it back to me. I'm like, I didn't say that well, but that's still what they heard. Yeah. Even though it was not my intentions, not what I said, it still hurt them. So I still got to do what? Clean up the mess. Come on. Y'all with me? For thy loving kindness is before my eyes. Where's it at? Before. before. I have walked in thy truth. I have sat with, not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with disassemblers. That's ones that stir discord and strife and want to gossip and talk and do all the other junk, just in case you didn't know. People that are there to tear down instead of build up. And you can be right in the smack of the most stuff at church in the middle of glory. You'll have somebody want to say dumb stuff. Just separate yourself from them. Just, you know, bless them. I will find my way to them, I promise you, if they're here. And they're probably already on my radar. You just don't know it, and they don't know it yet. Okay? Well, all still together. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. Listen, how many know that we are to. Uh, I'm going to talk real plain. We're streaming live. I may make the worldwide news with this one. I mean, no, we're, we're to, to love people and hate sin. But we have been in such a politically correct world and we are trapped by everything we try to say that people have just stopped saying anything. Now, I have led countless homosexuals to the Lord. I've seen them deliver, and I've watched their voices even change. Some of you have got to see them in this church, whether you knew it or not. Got saved and God changed them. But how many know that they had to first know it was a sin? before That would be like if someone's a drunkard or a drug addict, and well, we're just going to love them to Jesus. They'll stop and quit using drugs eventually. Just give them a little more drugs and let them in. That's the same thing you're saying with homosexuality when you tell them to leave them in that mess. Do you understand how absurd that is to a believer? Yeah. But Jesus died for them the same way he died for you. And their sin is no, no bigger than your sin that you were in before you came, is it? So we really need to love them, not be... I've seen Christians, they go off one thing or they get so religious, they beat on them and they lose the people they're trying to save because they keep beating the sin. And then I've seen them so scared not to tell them they're in sin because they don't want to offend them. Say, so what's that God about? 
I've hated the congregation of evildoers. I hate the spirit of homosexuality. I hate the spirit of abortion that's offering our babies up to the to the to eat to the evil demon of Moloch. I hate it. I will not take part in it. I will not have any participation of it. We won't be doing anything with those those people. Those spirits, I should say. But on the other hand, every mother that's ever went through and had their baby stole from them by some demonic thing, I want to be there to give them healing. Because I've never met a woman that had an abortion that didn't regret it. Let's just be honest. And they don't need me to beat them over the head and say, You sinner! You murderer! Listen, murderer is the same as a lie, so you, you're, you, better, you better get your finger pointed at you too. You liar, you hypocrite! Boy, I'm preaching this morning. What do I say? I said, man, Jesus loves you. He forgives you. His blood atones for that. Come here and be washed, man. You need to get rid of that. That, 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 that baggage but we don't want to do that no more we want to break free from that demonic spirit of abortion do y'all see the difference oh well I'm just trying to witness to them well you know how people have sat down and not and kept their mouth shut that are sitting with the congregation of evildoers do you hear my heart this morning and I will not sit with the wicked. Well, Jesus went to the bars and he sat with huggers and tax collectors. He sat one time. He got them saved. And they came with him. He didn't go back to them. God has sent me in the bars to get people before. But you didn't find me there next week. Come on, I... I'm not saying it's a sin to go in there. This one on the corner down here. Those people don't know if they're standing outside, they're in my radar. <laughs> so when I drive by, I give them some glory. <laughs> Lord, convict them, save them, deal with them in Jesus' name. Come on. Amen. Then I go ahead and just pray for all of them in there. They just remind me, hey, there's souls in there. And if God never told me to stop, I'd pull uh, yesterday on my heart. I, I was on the right attire. They would have accepted me then. I could pull my Harley right in there and have a good old Jesus talk. But God didn't tell me to. You see where I'm at? Boy, I'm getting off topic. No, I'm not on topic. God, let's just, just go on. We're not even through the same verse, verse, verse. And I got several pages that are double sided. I will wash my hands in intimacy, so I will compass that altar, O Lord. It means I'm going to keep my heart and hands clean. I'm not, but the Bible says, don't be swift to mischief. I mean, on mischief, it's uh, easy to get into these days. Everywhere you go. I mean, you need to keep your heart and hands clean. I mean, when you're about the things of God, it's not as easy to get in trouble. Can I just say it plain? <laughs> that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell all thy wondrous works. I'm going to go bragging about my Jesus. If I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about how good he is. Amen. I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thy honor dwelt. We've got it all that way. Now we're to the habitation. Come on, how many is ready to have a habitation of God and not just a visitation? Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, whose hand is mischief and the right hand is full of bribes. Don't go to worship them, sorry. But as for me, I will in my take. I don't meddle much, but... Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My, but my foot standeth in an evil place, and in thy congregations I will bless the Lord. Moving on. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Ephesians 2, 11. Y'all still with me? Ephesians 2, 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, you are called uncircumcised, which is called the circumcision of the flesh made by hands. You were once a bunch of dirty heathens, were you not? Okay. At least I was. I don't know about you. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covetous problem, having no hope 
without God in the world. He once had no hope, no promise, and could not get grafted into all the promises of Israel, and you, you, you didn't have anything to stand on. We were all there at one time before we accepted Jesus. But now in Christ Jesus, who you who are sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. You were once not able to get in, but now we can get. You were once not even able to have a visitation, but now you've been grafted in and made available to have a habitation. For he is our peace who have made us one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So he made a way where there seemed to be no way. Y'all still with me? Once, it was once a year you could get into the have a, visit, have a visitation. God said, I'm going to break it down so we can have a habitation. I'll, yeah, I'll get there. Just stay with me. We're sitting over here. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, to make himself of twain one new man, so making peace, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off and to them that were not. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Access. Somebody look at your neighbor and say access. Access. Access that allows you to have more than just a visitation that allows you to have a habitation. You now have access to the Spirit of God. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with saints of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostle prophet Jesus Christ, himself being the chief cornerstone. That's a whole message in itself. In whom all the building fit framely to fit fitly framed together, growing into a holy temple in the Lord. So we are making the temple of God, and we are all fitly framed together. And what happens in the temple of God? He inhabits. He has a habitation. Come on. Some of you are about it's starting to click. It's getting good, ain't it? Then Ephesians 2, 22. And whom you are also building together for, in case you were just looking right here in the scripture, it says for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Woo! How many are ready for a habitation of God through the Spirit? Amen. I mean, you just read it. You ain't trying to work it up. It, it's not some far-fetched thing. It's what he promises to happen. So why has it not been happening? Because we've not been lining up and we ain't been fitly framing together. We've been a bunch of odd blocks trying to hammer against each other. Right. Where unity is, God commands the blessing. I'm ready for it. Listen, we may not be a lot of people in here. There wasn't a lot of people in the upper room and they turned the whole world upside down because they had a habitation of God, not just a visitation. And I believe that Broken Chains Church is prime for a habitation. We've been having some great visitations, but I believe God is wanting to come and inhabit. Amen. And we see where it's promised right there in the Word of God, do we not? Amen. And I'm going to tie this together of the Old Testament and the New Testament. 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 27. 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verse 27. Everybody got it? Say amen. Amen. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. Now, how many know God and Jesus are still on the throne in heaven? Now, I'm not, if you if you don't understand some of what I'm about to say, you need to take our basic Bible doctrine course. How many know their Trinity is real, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Yes. 
I know Jesus said I had to go away that I may send a comforter unto you. So that means the Holy Spirit is now upon the earth. That is the one who inhabited and filled them with the Holy Spirit. How I many know there's the Spirit of Christ? That's Jesus when you get saved, when you get filled tongue talking. That's when the Holy Spirit comes and fill, fills you up. That is, that is the Holy Spirit that he tarried for when they inhabited them. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. And so uh, I'll read another translation real fast before I go. It says, Then the priests and Levites arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, and their prayer came to his holy habitation in heaven. He once only had his habitation in heaven. But now we just read where his habitation is in us. And he wants to make it known upon the earth by his spirit. Woo! If you start realizing the power, listen, that same spirit, that same Holy Ghost that raises Jesus from the dead, if it quickens your mortal bodies, what's too hard for you? Listen, they used to wait for a, hat, for a visitation to get healed. Someone say, well, we've had healing movements. There was visitations. But in these last days, he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Because God is coming to inhabit his people. And I have been tired. I got tired of reading about it a long time ago. I chased after him. I've had, I, I, I believe he's been inhabiting and with me for a long time. But listen, he sent me to Broken Chains Church. I'm your pastor. And listen, I, 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 I don't, a visitation doesn't do me no more. A good service ever now and again doesn't do me no more. I want a place where people walk into glory so strong, they either get right or run out weeping. If they come in broken, they get healed. Physically, spiritually, emotionally. Come on. He wrote it. Listen, people don't want to read about it. They want to experience it. But they can only experience it when we have the habitation inside us. We are the church. We are his glory keepers. I'm going to go ahead and meddle some more. I have to pull up the address. But how many you know that the uh, Bible says that cur cursing and blessing should not come out of the same mouth? That, that's, that's not a spring it should be. You can't be talking one way out of your mouth, sending one thing to your thermostat, and then sending another thing either. That's not how, listen, if you're feeding your flesh man, your flesh man's ruling you, and God will not be inhabiting you. You may have a visitation, but you will not have an inhabitation. Right. If you want to have an inhabitation, you need to be so full of the Spirit of God that it is what is controlling you and moving you. Does it mean you're always going to have easy days? No. Do you remember how I said to start of this service? It's going to be an adventure. Yes. Yeah. Come on. But it's going to be fun. Come on. Amen. All hell shows up and say, I hope you brought back extra. Because <laughs> greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. He's going to bring it. So what? I mean, you're playing with a stacked deck. What more do you want? <laughs> I read the end of the book. It says you win. What's he, he can't kill me. And if I get promoted early, I'm just going to go help make a place for y'all and be up there dancing with everybody else. Woo! <laughs> but as long as I'm here upon this earth, I'm going to bring a habitation of the presence of God wherever I go. Yesterday we had spirit riders. I had a lot of fun. It's been a while. But it was what it was, how God had designed it because the Spirit of God was going with me. I seen guys show up one way and in the middle of the ride, they were starting to have another way. They didn't even know what was happening. But the Spirit of God was affecting them. Amen. The glory of God. They were in a place where the habitation of God was. Y'all still with me? Good. Acts chapter 7, verse 33. Acts chapter 7, verse 33. Going quickly. 
Everybody there? Yeah. Good. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Mm -hmm. Now, like this sanctuary, God in heaven said, I can tell you, every plate building we've ever had for the church, I felt the glory come in and stay in the buildings that we're in. This building when we first got here, not knocking anyone that was here before, but it wasn't here. The glory wasn't here, the anointing wasn't here, but it's here now. Yeah. And it resides here. Why? Because we brought it, brought him with us. But he stays here all week. You can show up anytime you want. You can go out of that prayer garden out there and I, the anointing will be there. But we're on holy ground. Some people are like, well, pastor, why do you not allow this and that? Listen, I even get called old-fashioned. And I guess I'm going on a bunny trail. The Holy Spirit's taking me there. When we founded the church, and I may go back in the suits. I may finally be getting back down to the sizes I fit in them again. Yeah. That's a, been an issue. But uh, but uh, we found the church. I started in blue jeans and a t-shirt on a Friday night. We didn't even have church on Sundays. How many of you remember those days? And then the Lord dealt with me and said people would only come up as high as I was. And so I started changing my hair. It happened to have been I had never dressed up. I've been in ministry a long time. But, you know, and then this very verse here. God says, son, you're not honoring what I'm doing. You're not honoring my place. Well, a lot of people now, they have coffee bars and sanctuaries. Am I saying they're going to hell for having a coffee bar in there? No, if God allowed me, I'd probably do it because it seems to people like, seem to like it. But guess what? I found that, well, they spill it all over the place. They do this, they do that. And it just becomes another building to them. Okay. Not a place where they recognize right. where there's an inhabitation of God. I'm not talking about them. What they do for them is between them and God. I'm talking about why God has dealt with me. And so he's, talk, he's told me to always keep the sanctuary reverent. That's why I always tell the kids not to run. Because I want them to, re re to realize they're in a place where God resides. So if you're wondering why we do things a little different, that, that's, that's our thought process. This, is, this room right here is where God resides. And we choose to treat it as such. And ultimately where God resides though is in us. And you need to start learning to treat it as such. Amen. Come on, are you with me? I'm not beating on you today. I hope you don't feel that way. I just want to get more of the glory in you because it's going to help you in every possible way. You see what I'm saying? All right. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the affliction of my, my people with Egypt. I've heard their groaning. I've come down to deliver them. And now I come and I'll send them up to Egypt. I'm going to talk fast. This Moses whom they refused said, who made thee a ruler and judge? The same did God send to me a ruler and delivered by the hand of an angel which appeared to him in the bush. He brought them out after he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and the Red Sea and the wilderness of 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto thee your brethren like unto them. You, him shall ye hear. This is he that is in the children of the wilderness with the angel, uh, church in the wilderness with the angel which uh, spake to them in the Mount Zion and with our fathers who received the lively, lively work was given us to whom our fathers would not obey but thrust him from them and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. So they didn't want to receive God and even though they had a visitation from God, they weren't ready for a habitation because they kept getting their hearts jacked up. See where I'm going here? <clears throat> Saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as, as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we are not what has become of him. We don't know where he ran off to. Let's already go back to what we know. And... Uh, most people are trying to make God something they can control instead of letting God control them. Right. Right. And they're trying to form a God in their image. When people go shopping for a church today, they go shopping for a new car. Mm -hmm. And they try to suit what fits them best. If church doesn't make you uncomfortable and grow you, I'm going to tell you you're not in the right church. And I tell people when they came here, some people say, Pastor, you run off people. I tell them, you need to know God called you here. Why? Because sooner or later, you're going to get upset with me 
And there will be no way I can talk you into staying. But when you know you heard God to be here, you will stay and you will let God finish the work he started in you. Amen. 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 Not that I'm offense. I do not try to hurt anybody. I, I really do love people. And I probably got a soft heart to a fault. But still, I also love you enough to always tell you the truth. Amen. Yes. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice in the idol, rejoicing in the works of their own hands. And God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven as written in the book of the prophets, O you of Israel, and offered to be slain beasts and sacrificed by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. Yea, you took the tabernacle of Molech. Molech is the same God that they are offering our babies up to today. And the star of your God. Uh, Rephraim figures which you made to worship him, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle witness in the wilderness as he had appointed, speaking to Moses, that he should make it according to fashion that he had seen. They had a tabernacle where they could go and be with God, and they still chose to do it their way. They had a place where they could go have a habitation, but they still would rather have it their way. Y'all still with me? How many think this is going on in America today? How many knows that we can't do nothing about America really right now, but we can do something about us? Amen. Amen? And when we do something about us, it does do something about America for the record. Which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus the possession of Gentiles and God drew him out of the face of our fathers in the day of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. There was once a place where he inhabited just the temples. But now he inhabits his people. And he is looking to have a habitation. You know, when you have visitors, they tiptoe around and they want to be respectful of your home. And, you know, they know they're only there for a little while, you know. You, if they're a good visitor, you don't find them in the fridge at three in the morning. <laughs> but when they habitate, you're going you're gonna to find them in the fridge, you're going to find them in the back room that you didn't want nobody in. They're going to be cleaning something up, saying, I'm not living like this. Oh my God. Come on. God wants a habitation. They say to the prophet, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build me? Say the Lord. <laughs> What house are you going to build me that's going to be big enough to fit me in? <laughs> I stuck my pinky in the other one and you had enough, but, you know. <laughs> ain't one big enough. But he wants to live in us. And today I've been, I went through a lot of scenarios, but today I want to encourage you that God wants to move Broken Change Church and every person in this room today from visitations to habitation. How many's hand is up with me today and say, I, I want a habitation? And I'm not saying that some of you aren't experienced in that way, that form some now, but I, I'm telling you there is so much more. You know, when was the last time when you walked by a homeless person and said, silver and gold have I none, but what I have rise up and walk? Now, don't be surprised. You want to know what's happened with me with people? And uh, well, I'll share the person's name now. But there was a gentleman one time, he came to the altar, he was in a wheelchair, all shriveled up. And the power of God touched him, and he got up and walked. He walked out of the wheelchair, was walking all around. And God had me ask him a direct question. Are you really to give up the disability and all the finances that go with that or not? And he said no. And the last time I saw him, he was back in the wheelchair and his legs were about that big around. 
See, so many times we just want to tell God how to do it. He, he wanted all of those things that came with it. He felt like he owed, that was owed to him. And listen, I'm not knocking people that need disability that's paid into it. I, I, please don't hear, please hear my heart. Are you hearing my heart? Mm -hmm. so, you know, God will heal you. But how many know when you're healed, you don't get to still get to check for it? And would you are you willing to give up the check Amen. for your healing? And I'm not knocking you for all. I hope you're. I know this is a sensitive subject, mm -hmm. but I hope you're hearing my heart. And maybe it was encouraging your face to step out. You know, and maybe God will listen. God's going to pay your bills no matter what. Yeah, that's what He does. He says, "Don't think about where you live or where you eat. If He takes care of the birds of the air, how much more is He going to take care of you?" Yeah. And when you learn to depend on that kind of faith. It takes you to a different place. How can you do that? Because he's inhabiting you. And where God is, there's the spirit of the God. Where the spirit of God is, he's moving on your behalf. Are y'all hearing my heart this morning? You're hearing the word of God? Now, this is always easy. No. No. But it's an adventure. Some of you are tired of hearing that already. All right. Hath not my hand made all these things? Now he gets a little rough with us. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your father did, so do you. Let's not resist the Holy Spirit. Let's let him have his way. Amen? Amen. Which of the prophets have you, your, not your fathers persecuted, and they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one? If you have been the betrayers or murderers, we have received the law of dispensation by angels and have not kept it. Like, listen, they had it all, and they still threw it away. I'm giving you the best. Don't be a knucklehead. That's PB version. Mm -hmm. Psalms 22, verse 3. Psalms 22, verse 3. Last few verses, wrapping up. Just a few minutes over, but I had a few minutes from a few weeks ago. <laughs> but thou art holy, O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel. I mean, who inhabits the praises of his people? When you worship God, he inhabits it. He comes down. He starts hanging out. If you don't, you should be reading, when you read your Bible every day, you're spending time with him and he inhabits that. And then you need to split, start, if you have, if you're going to do it, start putting on some worship music during your day. And just start giving him praise. You, listen, you may not have all the flowery words, and I, I hope you don't sound like me, because you don't need to be copying me. It's you and his relationship. You know, sometimes when I first started learning to praise God, I'm going to tell you all I can say is I just, I love you, Jesus. I'm so thankful for you, oh Lord. I, I, there's none like you. you. You know, you just you don't you don't have to be a know at all. You just got to speak from your heart and give Him glory. Mm -hmm. How many of you know He did something exceptional for you? And the more you grow in Him, the more your praises will grow because He's a really big God, and there's no end to it being able to praise Him. But if you want to start more of a ha in habitation instead of a visitation, if you only praise him on Sundays, I hate to tell you, you're like a you're, you're like a, a, a stepkid. You only are there for visitation. He wants full custody. Mm -hmm. 